Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Kawaii Britt and today we're going to be continuing on with my October series. This month the videos will all be Halloween themed and instead of verbalizing the steps I take to make my creations, I'm going to be sharing different spooky stories. My stories, my town stories, and other stories that just interest me. I'm aware that many of you may be skeptics, so if that's the case, I hope you enjoy the craft I'm making. And for those of you interested in history, haunts, and just plain spooky things, I hope you enjoy taking this adventure in the series with me. Today I'm going to talk to you all about the location that is near and dear to my heart. This location is my hometown volunteer theater called the Belmont Theater. I spent a good majority of my youth at the Belmont Theater taking part in various shows. I participated in many shows as an actress, ran various spots as a techie, and even helped with summer theater camps. And in true theater nerd fashion, I've had many experiences with the ghosts that reside within the theater. Everyone who is involved or has been to a theater knows that they are almost always infested with paranormal activity. A lot of emotions, time, and passions go into making a show, so it isn't surprising that some of these energies remain in the building. The theater world is filled with tales of the unknown and many superstitions. I mean, there's a reason the theaters always set out a lamp they call a ghost light. A ghost light is a small, single bulb light, usually a floor lamp, that is left energized on the stage when the theater is unoccupied. The practical use of a ghost light is for safety. It helps to light up the end of the stage to avoid accidents, such as falling into the pit, tripping over cords, set pieces, and props. Other than the more practical purpose, many superstitions grew about the purpose of ghost lights. A popular theatrical superstition holds that every theater has a ghost, and the ghost light provides night at light for the spirits to be able to see and even perform or dance on the stage. This pleases those ghosts and prevents them from cursing or sabotaging the theater or its productions. Other superstitions claim that the light is used in place to scare away the ghosts and not to appease them. The Belmont, previously known as the York Little Theater, has not abandoned the ghost light. In fact, they use two of them, one in the main stage and one in their black box. The Belmont Theater is where I got my start. I had already taken part in a few other theater productions, so when my aunt told me about auditions coming up at the York Little Theater, I had to jump. Spoiler, I made it into the show and had entered myself into the world of volunteer theater. Formed in 1933, York Little Theater is one of the oldest operating community theaters in the United States. The York Little Theater hired its first full-time director in January of 1934 and became registered as a non-profit organization. From 1934 to 1953, it operated its shared offices out of the York County Academy building on Beaver Street in York. When World War II ended, York Little Theater went in search of a more permanent location and after a few failed attempts, finally had a home of its own. In July of 1953, York Little Theater signed a lease purchase agreement for the Elmwood Theater, a former movie house. The Elmwood Theatre opened on June 2, 1949, specialized in showing art and foreign film theatre, and lasted about a decade. It was also named for the neighborhood in which it was built. In May of 1956, York Little Theatre took the title. York Little Theatre enjoyed decades of growth and success, and in 1997, a 7,000 square foot addition was added. The addition included a new costume shop, green room, dressing rooms, office space, additional backstage space, and a theater studio, aka the Black Box Theater. Since then, many other changes have taken place in the theater, including the name. Today, the York Little Theater is known as the Belmont Theater, so named as the theater is located on Belmont Street. The Belmont is a treasured part of the York community and is looking to continue to offer live theater for decades to come. With all that knowledge and the backstory out of the way, let's get into some of the haunts of the theater. There are many paranormal claims at this theater. Some hear footsteps and shuffling, screws and nails being thrown, shadows are seen, and even disembodied voices are heard, to name a few. One of the most well-known is in the back stairwell of the theater. Walking through this stairwell will lead you into a set shop and back into the green room. When you are in a show, this is the path you have to travel to get across the stage for entrances on the other side without causing the curtain to be moved or for you to be heard. While the set shop is always fully lit, the back stairwell is dimly lit. Sometimes as you are walking through it, you may feel like someone is watching you. 
The air is always cooler, and some people have even turned to see a shadow in their presence. The figures have been seen so often that they have been named George and Martha, and that's what we call the stairwell as well. Most actors and actresses are known to bring a buddy or two with them when passing through so as not to be spooked before their stage entrance. You aren't safe from the ghost in the green room either. The green room is supposed to be a location for relaxation before the show and between scenes, but it is also an area of anxiety. Actors pace the green room prior to curtain, getting into costume and makeup, checking props, and going over and over lines and set directions. Naturally, that anxiety fills the room when many actors are doing the same thing. When the theater first started putting on productions in this location, the green room was set in what is now the technical director's office. Walking into the office makes you feel overrun with emotions. You feel drained and anxious, much like the actors would have felt. The office sits in a hallway which leads one way to what is now the green room and the other way to the set shop. Also sitting in that hallway are the bathrooms for the actors. I've heard stories and experienced phantom footsteps in this hallway, always in a hurry. The spirits must be in a hurry to get on stage in time for their cue. One known story in the hallway is one of my stories. In 2009, I was cast in the musical Ragtime. I had a few ensemble roles and spent most of my time performing on stage. This particular scene in the show, I had a break, but everyone else was on stage. Naturally, I used this break to use the restroom. It was common, due to there being only one toilet for each gender in the green room, for us to tell our fellow actors if we were going to be in there a while so that they can go to use one of the other restrooms and not miss a cue. I was washing my hands and reaching for the paper towels when I heard three swift knocks on the door. I answered the knocks by saying, I'll only be a moment. No sooner to me finishing that sentence, my hand was on the doorknob. I heard whoever was on the other side say, okay, as I pulled the door open, but no one was there. I walked to the green room and no one was there either. There was no way anyone could get away that fast. I was just a little spooked, so I went back on stage early to get ready for my next scene. But I'm not the only one who has experienced these odd occurrences in the green room. Another well-known story is that of a friend of mine. This friend's father was actually the tech director at the time and she spent most of her time at the theater. This particular day, she was trying to do her homework in the green room. There was a radio sitting in the green room as well. While my friend was working, the radio started to play. She promptly got up and switched the radio back off. She knew the theater girls very well and wasn't scared of them. She sat back down to work and the radio came on once again. She continued the pattern of turning off the radio a few times before she went to unplug the radio altogether, only to find it wasn't plugged in to begin with. Continuing through the green room will lead you to another hallway. This hallway connects the newer portion of the theater to the older portion. The first area I'm going to lead you to is up the stairs. This stairway and hall is yet another very haunted location in the theater. The first door you come across is a storage room that leads into the catwalk in the Black Box Theater. This is a room that not many seek to stay in for long. That might be because it's dark and dreary, or maybe it's because it could be a fear cage. One summer as a teen, I was asked to be a volunteer leader with a few other teens for the theater's summer camp. As all the students were in class, the other teens and I would often play games. One day, when one of our favorite games, spoons became banned due to the noise we created we switched to our second favorite game sardines if you aren't familiar sardines is a game that plays out much like hide and seek but in this case one person hides and everyone searches for them when you find the hider you hide along with them the object is to not be the last one to find everyone the rules were that we could hide anywhere the classes were not happening it was my turn to hide. I quickly ran up the stairs and into the storage room. I was trying to decide if I wanted to hide behind the boiler or in the catwalk when I noticed a drawer and a big wardrobe in the corner. I opened the wardrobe and noticed it was empty. I had to climb over a few stored scrims and curtains to get into the wardrobe, so I knew this would be a good spot that many people wouldn't find me in. Now the wait began. It was very quiet in the wardrobe, not to mention dark, really dark. The room itself wasn't lit, so the wardrobe was even darker. After quite some time, I heard the door to the room open and someone step in. 
shortly after I heard the pile of curtains rustle and the wardrobe door pop open. I couldn't see who was there, but I could see the outline. They looked into the wardrobe, making the doors creak a little, and I made a shh noise, so they would be quiet. They climbed back over the curtains and into the other corner, which hosted the other smaller wardrobe. This one had some curtains in it, but I guess it was enough room for that person to hide. They climbed in, and I heard the click of the door shutting. I figured they were settled, so I closed the wardrobe doors, leaving one open just a crack so I could see a little bit into the room. Shortly after, I heard a bunch of running and stomping up the stairs. It was my friends. I heard them saying something outside the door. Then they opened the door and loudly whispered, Brittany, if you're in here, we give up, it's been too long. Hearing this, I popped out of the wardrobe, scaring the friend that entered the room as their back was to me. We laughed it out a little bit about the hiding spot. Then I noticed that the person in the cupboard wasn't popping out. I said, hey, you can come out now, but the door didn't budge. My friends were looking at me oddly, so I asked them who found me. They told me no one had, and that it had been way too long and they were worried about me, so they came to look for me. I told them that someone did find me and they were in the cupboard. We all walked over to the cupboard, opened the door, but no one was there. I quickly told them what happened and we all ran away because we were too spooked to stay in that room. Perhaps it was my friends playing a trick on me, but no one ever fessed up to it. All I know is that after that experience and another experience in the catwalk, I've never gone up there since. Following down the hall is the costume shop where my favorite costumer spent many sleepless nights finishing up on costumes for the latest production. She used to tell us many different events that she experienced in this part of the theater. The hunts ranged from disembodied footsteps to the lights turning off and on, all on their own. Nothing seemed to phase her though. Oftentimes, as we would be measuring or trying on costumes, we would hear running in the part of the shop that housed the costumes, to which she would exclaim, Oh, those are my friends. She was used to them, but many of us were not. My last time up there alone was when I was involved in the production of Henry and Ramona, a children's show. I was cast as a character that had a scene where I got soaked with water. The director wanted it to look as real as possible, so she had a baby pool on the stage for me to hop into and a bucket of water for me to toss on myself. Children's shows had two showings on Saturdays and Sundays, so between the shows I would have to take my costume up to the costume shop and toss it in the dryer. Often, some of the kids or teens would follow me up for the process. The last Sunday, I went up to pick up my costume from the dryer. As I was getting my costume, I heard footsteps getting closer and faster from behind my back. Thinking it was one of the kids or teens trying to sneak up on me, I planned to flip around real quick and scare them instead. As the steps got closer and closer to me, I jumped and spun around to nothing. No one was there. I quickly got my costume, ran out of the costume shop, locked the door, and returned to the green room. I'm glad I turned around, but I wonder what would have happened if I didn't. In the newer attachment to the theater, as I stated before, they built the studio theater, which we call the black box. The black box was a room designed to be set up as a theater in the round environment. This room is the heart of one of my scariest experiences at the theater. In 2009 or 2010, the theater hosted a paranormal group as part of a Halloween event. The paranormal group did a couple of sessions prior to the event and found many EVPs and pictures of these otherworldly spirits. They tried to debunk them as well. The theater thought it would be a fun experience and a gratuitous fundraiser to do a haunted theater walkthrough with volunteers and the paranormal group taking you to each room and telling all of these stories. The last stop on this journey was the Black Box Theater where they would do a live spirit box. I was asked to be one of the volunteer guides for this event as I knew the theater very well. I jumped at the opportunity as the director promised each of us a chance to do a haunt with a paranormal group at midnight on Halloween. This story doesn't take place during that personal ghost hunting, but maybe in the future I can tell some of those stories to you. Everything went as planned as I was leading the tour with my first group. At the end, we made it to the Black Box Theater where a majority of the paranormal group was waiting without a hitch. After the paranormal group showed us a few of their evidence finds from the Black Box Theater, they proceeded to turn off the lights and start a spirit box session. The static of the channels of the spirit box flipping and the guide's voice asking questions to the black box hummed in the background 
as I looked around the dark room. I wasn't prepared for the way the feeling in the room changed. Nothing was coming through the spirit box, I just looked around the room as the time went on. I felt drawn elsewhere and slowly focused my eyes on the catwalk. A couple rows of glow tape were adhered to the wall. Suddenly the light from the glow tape was slightly blocked. I could still see the glow tape but it was getting a little bit darker, then brighter. After a little, I realized it was a shadow, a figure pacing back and forth across the catwalk. Some other people in the group noticed this happening. One of the paranormal group members hopped up and flipped on the light switch really quick, trying to see if someone was up there on the walk, but no one was there. He switched the light back out and we continued the spirit box session. The shadow was back, pacing back and forth, stopping every now and then at the lighting equipment on the catwalk as if it were working on a show. As I was watching, I started to feel a pressure in my chest. It was as if my heart was in someone's hand and it was being squeezed tightly. I sat through the pain thinking I was having a heart attack, trying to keep my breath. Then it was quiet. The spirit box flipped off and the lights were turned on. The pain went away. I turned to look at what everyone was doing and I noticed one of the paranormal group members, who was also my friend, was holding onto his chest. I walked over to him to ask him if he had felt what I did when another paranormal group member, a sensitive, came over to us and said he didn't like us because we were Italian. This kind of made sense to me because our area at the time that this theater had been created was very racist towards Italian immigrants. And I and my friend were both descendants of Italian immigrants. I needed my sister to get to the theater that night to see if our theory was true. When my sister got there, I explained what was going on with the event, without telling her what happened in the black box theater. I got the director to put her into the group I was guiding so that we could test out our theory. When we got to the black box, I sat by my sister and told her to tap on me if she saw or felt something out of the ordinary, and that I would do the same to her. Sure enough, every time we saw the figure, we simultaneously tapped on each other, and when we felt the pain, we tapped on each other too. Afterward, I asked her what she experienced, and it was the same as my friend and I. Now, whenever I enter that room for an audition, rehearsal, or for a show, I always announce to the spirit that I am only there for the event, and then I will promptly leave and not re-enter until the next event. I let them know that I will not bother them longer than that if it does not mess with me. It mostly complies. The last room I want to take you to at this theater has a somber story tied to it. This is in the rehearsal room, which was once used as the studio room before the renovation of the black box. The story of the rehearsal room goes as follows. Not too long ago, a production was about to open. The show in question revolved around a boy who had died and the events that followed his death. It is said that the young actor playing this character grew sick and died before the production could open and now he remains in the theater to haunt the living. Many stories have developed around this young ghost. Most involve props being moved. Once, a custodian said he rolled a ball back and forth with the little boy, and there's even an EVP saying, Ali Ali Oxen Free, as if playing an eternal game of hide and seek. As you can see, there are many stories of unrest at the Belmont Theater. So many people and emotions have passed through the theater throughout the years, I'm sure there are many more. I've only shared a few with you, but it still sends chills through me, down to the bone. It's been a while since I've stepped into the Belmont Theater, but I'm sure whenever I do, I'll have a few more stories to share with all of you. Thanks for watching! I hope you enjoyed this October's theme. If you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button up there to be notified when my next video comes out. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Those links are located in the description for you. I also stream! Check me out on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6.30pm Eastern Standard Time and Saturdays at 9.30am Eastern Standard Time. My Twitch is also in the description. If you made it this far, hit the like button if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments, would you be interested in hearing more of my ghost stories in the future? Thanks again for watching everyone. Happy haunting!